All right, four point two. Greatest common factor, also known as the GCF. Okay. All right, GCF, greatest common factor. Not real hard, but uh, some people have a little problem with it occasionally. Um, all right, so let's take for example. I'm trying to find the GCF of 24 and 63. Okay, now, what this means, what the greatest common factor is, is this. The factors of 24 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. If we list all the numbers that you can multiply together to get 24, those are the numbers. Okay, for 63, we have 1, 3, oh, let's see, 7, 9, 21, 63. Okay? Now, obviously, every single number has 1 as a common factor. Okay? So, if 1 is the only number that they share, then we call that relatively prime. Okay? That is not the case in this example. Okay, and I'll show you one of those here in a second. But every single number has one as a factor. Okay, so we're not looking at one because it's not the greatest common factor. Okay, the next common factor is three. Okay, and obviously that's the biggest one we have. Okay, so the GCF... The greatest common factor of 24 and 63 equals 3. Okay, now, that was a fairly simplistic example because it's not hard to come up with the common factors of 24 and 63. Okay, um, that is what we call finding the GCF by listing all factors of each number. Okay? Well, there's got to be any, there's got to be another way to do it because for example, what if I gave you the numbers 198 and 216? Okay? Obviously that might take you a while to list all the con list all the factors of both of those numbers. Okay? So there is a way that you can do it, okay? We can find the GCF by prime factoring each number, okay? So I can prime factor 198 and 216. Now, once again, I don't care which way you do it. Use the factor tree, use inverted division, use both. I don't care. All right? I've seen people that, you know, use factor tree on one of the number and inverted division on the other number. That's fine. You can do that. Okay? The bottom line is, to find the GCF of these two numbers, I have to come up with a prime factorization of the two numbers. Okay? So, I'm going to use, like I've said, I'm going to use inverted division. Because for me, that's, that's the simplest way to do it. So if you want to use factor tree, then go ahead and start doing factor tree while I'm doing the inverted division. Okay? Uh, the, the 198, I'm just going to start with 2, because that's the easiest. Be 9 with the remainder of 1. 2 and 18 goes 9 times. Now, obviously, 2 doesn't go into 99, so I move to the next one, 3. 
Three goes into 99 33 times. Three goes into 33 11 times. And so I'm done. So 2 times 3 times 3 times 11. Now, I am listing it out for a specific reason. I'll show you here in just a second. The prime factorization of 216. Okay, I'll start with 2 because that's my first prime number and the number's even, so it'll go into it. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 1 zero times, remainder 1. 2 goes into 16 eight times. 2 goes into two, 108 54 times. 2 goes into 54 27 times. 3 goes into 27 nine times. 3 goes into 9, 3 times. So we can't do 3 to the second number? Do, well, I'm, I'm showing you why we're not doing that. All right, so I'm going to list this one out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, now I'm also over here to the, le or to the right, I'm going to list them out with their exponents. And I'm going to show you why I did it this way as opposed to the other way. Okay? Now, to find the GCF, Okay, to find the GCF, we must find all of the prime factors the two numbers have in common. Okay, so if we do that, we've got a 2, we have a 3, and we have another 3. So the numbers that they have in common are 2 times 3 times 3. Now, we simply multiply the 2, the 3, and the 3 together, okay? 2 times 3 is 6, times 3 is 18. So the GCF of 196, uh, is that right? 198, 198 and 216 equals 18. So, you will notice that I didn't do this. This is not correct. I'm not multiplying all of the factors that are common together. Okay? That would be wrong. Okay? I'm taking each pair and multiplying one of the pair, one of the numbers in the pair together. Okay, now, the next thing you need to know, the GCF will never be larger than the smallest number you are comparing. Okay, so the smallest number I was comparing was what? 198, right? Okay. Well, the GCF will never be lar would not be larger than 198 because it would be impossible to divide something larger than 198 into 198. In other, in other words, the GCF must be it must be able to be divided into 
each number. Okay, what I mean by that is that I must be able to do this. 18 into 198 and 18 into 216. And when you do that, they must come out a whole number, okay? Because if it if I if I can't do that, then it's not a factor of that number. Okay, now let's look at one. Let's look at relatively prime. Okay? Relatively prime is the GCF of two or more numbers is one. Okay, that's what it means to be relatively prime. So that last example that I did, is that, relatively, is that number relatively prime, those two numbers relatively prime or not relatively prime? Yeah, not relatively prime because the greatest common factor is one. Is not one, okay? Yes, Matt. No. In other words, you don't have any numbers that it's common by. For example, 56 and 81. Okay, if I was to define the GCF of 56 and 81, well, 56, if I prime factor it is 2, 28, 2, 14, 2, and 7. 81 is 3, 27, 3, 9, 3, 3. Okay, they don't have any numbers that are common between them. Okay, so therefore, the only number that can be common is a GCF of 1. Okay, now back up here to stuff right here. Okay, the reason I don't list it like that is because you may not be able to tell that I had, you know, two threes, one two, that was common, okay? And realistically, since I do inverted division, I rarely list them out because it's very easy to see from my, in, from my inverted division that those are the ones I have in common because all my prime numbers are on the outside of the bracket, so it's real easy to see whether or not something's prime or, or not prime or, you know, it's got a GCF, all that stuff. That's why I do it, one of the many ways I do inverted, why I do inverted division, okay? Now, um, everybody go to the board. Going to do some examples. Okay, I'm going to do some examples. Um, all right, I want you to find the GCF of 36 and 168. Okay, 36 and 168. All right. So, prime factorization of 36, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, the prime factorization of 168, 2, let's see, 64, 42, so times, yeah. All right, then you have this there, and so we multiply those two together, and so that's 12. So the GCF is 12. All right, now, 
This one here. GCF. 144 and 264.